For this lesson, I'm using the project file 0403 change the size of clips. And you can find that project file with the media associated with this lesson. Double click to open it in Premiere Pro. Not all media that you import into your project will match the frame size of your sequence. And if your images are too big, the edges will be cropped. Premiere Pro makes it easy to change the way oversized images are handled. Let's take a look. I have a sequence here with a number of clips and images. This shot, Walking on Sands, is the right resolution for our sequence. But if we look here, we've got a shot that's much too big. This is a photograph, and it's common for photos to be much bigger than video resolutions. If I scroll down in our project panel to find it, here we go. It's this whale in the foreground shot. 4,272 by 2,848 pixels. It's pretty big. If I double click to open this up, you can see the original composition. Not only is the image the wrong size, it's also the wrong shape. It's not 16 by 9 like regular HD video. In the timeline, I'm going to right click on this clip and I'm going to choose set to frame size. This automatically resizes the image so that it fits in full in our sequence image resolution, which is in this case 1280 by 720 pixels. The horizon line is still off. And it'd be good if we could fix that. And the image size still isn't perfect because we're getting these so-called pillar boxes on the left and right sides of the clip. That's of course because it's not 16 by nine. We've got to find some way to fix that. So I'm gonna make sure the clip is selected by single clicking on it in my timeline panel. And I'm gonna to go to a new panel, Effect Controls. The Effect Controls panel will give you options that relate to effects for each clip that you click on. And it'll only show you the settings for one clip at a time. If you have more than one item selected, you won't see anything in the Effect Controls panel, as you can see here. In fact, you just get a warning that there are multiple clips selected. So I'm going to deselect and just choose this one well in the foreground shot. I'm going to expand these motion controls in the effect controls panel. And you can see we've got some pretty standard options here to change the position on screen of the shot. We can change the scale, that's the size of it, and we can rotate it. Let's begin by fixing that horizon line. I'm going to click and drag on this rotation control to get this a little more level. In fact, I can expand the rotation control and get a more of a graphic interface to adjust this. And if I click and drag with the control key held down, I get a little bit more precision in the adjustment. I'm going to go for something like minus 1.4%. I think that pretty much works. Now I can use these position and scale controls to rearrange the composition. I'm going to start by clicking on the scale control and dragging to the right to make this a little bit bigger so it fills the screen. And then above that, you can see we've got a position control with two numbers. The first number is the X position. I'll drag that so you can see left and right. And the Y position, that's the up and down. So just imagine there's an X and a Y next to these controls to get a sense of what they do. We have quite a lot of other images here as well. And they're all much too big for this sequence. But luckily, if I select all of these and right click, I can use the set to frame size option for all of them in a single step. Of course, now you'll want to make those individual adjustments to get the best possible composition from each image. But this is a quick way to get started. If you work with video clips that are oversized for your sequence, you can use exactly the same technique to resize them.